As a deer hunter, I want to know all I can about America's favorite big game animal. That's why I became a deer farmer. Without deer farms, we lose our greatest resource for research and whitetail management. With them, we gain more knowledge than ever before. Join me as we discover the truth about whitetails and meet those who work every day to preserve this great species for future generations. My name is Keith Warren and this is Deer and Wildlife Stories. Hey everybody, welcome to the show and to the great state of Ohio where today we're at Double H Whitetails. I'm Ivan Huckstetler, name of the deer farm is Double H Whitetail and we're located in Wayne County, Ohio, just a mile south of Mount Eaton and about an hour south of Cleveland. Yeah, this place is packed. I've made some great friends in this industry, and those of you that I have not met yet, you're my friends that I don't know yet. Less than 10 years ago, this land was just pasture land. But today, thanks to the hard work of the Hochstetler family, this pasture land has been transformed into one of the most beautiful deer farms in the entire state of Ohio. This farm is also raising some of Ohio's biggest whitetails, and it truly is a showplace for others interested in the deer farming industry to stand up and notice. It's late July, and even though the bucks have a full month of growing left to do, I've stopped by for a visit. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank you again this morning for a beautiful morning. Thank you for the rain last night. Thank you for Keith and Kent for coming. Let me tell you about the Hochstetler family. Yes, Double H Whitetails has impressive deer, but what impresses me more than their deer is the family themselves. I'm honored to call the Hochstetlers my friends, and the deer farming community is blessed to have such a great example for others to follow. Although this is a family farm, the most important person is my wife, Ruby. She's the rock behind this whole thing. Some people know her as Mama Deer. She gets calls from Wisconsin, Indiana, even some from Canada calling her, hey, what do you do if, if, if I have a deer with this sickness? And without Ruby, there wouldn't be no deer farm. I'm Ruby Hostetler, and um, this is our little ranch, I guess. And I actually grew up just a little bit up the road here. Um, my dad graciously gave us the land where we have our farm on. Our two sons are full-time employed at the ranch here. Keith Warren is one amazing guy. I'll never forget when we first watched his show on television. And I, I just love watching these shows. And then one day, um, I was up at the shop where Ivan has his pallet shop and uh, my brother-in-law was saying that he's got Keith Warren on the phone. I said, you are so totally choking me. And he said, no, you got Keith Warren on the phone. I said, seriously, stop joking. And here I actually got to talk with Keith Warren on the phone and I thought I was, I was the happiest woman in the whole world. <laughs> He's just a really dear friend of ours, and we really like like Keith and what all he does to the industry. Yeah, I encourage anybody in Ohio or anybody in the Midwest, for that matter, if you're within driving range, come over here because you're going to see some incredible animals. When the show returns, they have grown these deer in less than 10 years. They've taken their deer farm from being just a, just, just a young deer farm and now really just coming on to be one of the most respected deer farms in Ohio and the country for that matter. Folks, they're unbelievable and you're fixing to see on today's program what good pedigrees and the right breeding will do for a deer farm. I'm Ruby Hostetler and you're watching Deer and Wildlife Stories with Keith Warren. We 
started off as uh, approximately 160 adult deer and then we had 72 fawns, so we're up 230 total deer. All right, looks like a bunch of yearlings in here. All except for the man right there. Boy, I know who that is. Ooh, baby. That's yeah, Blackwater, that's huh? Blackwater. At two. Two years old. Yeah, this year is two. Yeah, Blackwater last year scored uh, 202 mainframe at a six by seven frame and uh, gross was in the uh, high 230s. Well, uh, Blackwater actually won an award at the uh, Deer British Corporation down in Texas last year, right? He did, actually. We entered in, in uh, the DBC uh, Colton Buck uh, Awards and he won first place out of state typical. We bred him to some really good does, so we're anxious to see what the offspring is. So you've you know. got babies on the ground. We've got babies it. on the ground, you know. And, and you know, and, and a buck is, their value is on their offsprings. You right, know. right. It's, it's, and so you don't really know what, what you he's- You don't know, yeah, you know what he's producing. Until, until next, next year. year. But but folks, this show is going to run. Keep in mind, this this show it is right now the end of July. So as you're looking at Blackwater and, and Express line, all these other bucks we're showing you today, these bucks have got another several weeks to grow. So they're not done, okay? But next year when this show runs, it'll run the first, second quarter next year. If you wanna come out on a farm tour, you wanna see the offspring of any of these breeders, all you need to do is just come and they'll be happy to show you. But but, but you've got babies on the ground out of him right now. Yes, we do. Wow. Ivan, I have watched y'all's farm go from where you didn't have very many deer to where now you've got added pins and you've got a lot of deer and you've got a lot of great deer. I gotta ask you, uh, besides the obvious, so you, what is your number one goal here? Uh, number one goal is just to uh, raise big, pretty deer. You know, we started out as a hobby. Uh, it wasn't long we were in it. We you knew we had to make a decision, either keep it as a hobby or, you know, get serious and play the market and, you know, make so it's profitable and, and we're, we're on our way. No, you're on your way. In other words, you're, you took a hobby, you took an interest, and you became, and it's an enterprise. It's a business now. Right. You have a business plan, and, and clearly your business plan is to grow the biggest, prettiest deer that right. you can. And I would think also to help as many people behind you to come in and help them grow deer too. Yeah, yeah. Every farm we have, um the special buck on everybody's farm. Uh, right now, the, our favorite deer uh, is probably Timber Crown, uh, just because he was born here, and, and every year he just consistently has that that look. I think he's just one of the prettiest bucks and the graceful looking bucks. He's got this real dark coat, and he holds his head like none other. I love him. But there's something about that deer being non-typical. The way he carries that rack is just uh, uh, a testament to his body strength. We had this one little fawn years ago that uh, he was born and he was actually I think a triplet and his his one his front foot was bent so far that there was no way he could even walk or stand even to nurse on the moms. Well when he was little we got some great footage of him and I can remember looking at him and he looked just terrible. I mean it was like you know, I, I remember seeing at the time that if that deer was born out in the wild, he would never, ever live. Oh, no. Ruby, she did a wonderful job. You know, she had him on, it, on her lap every feeding, just stretch and stretch. We got it stretched enough that we could put a little splint on, and, and it's been years now, and he's, he's got a rack just about as big as some of our biggest bucks we got out there. Okay, so, so who's the other big guy in here with him? Uh, that is Tall Boy. And yeah, how old is he? Tall Boy's five this year. Uh, he is out of the same sire as, as Bentley, which is Triple Crown. Triple Crown is kind of was our first breeder that we had here. And these other guys were yearlings, huh? They're yearlings, yeah. I mean, those are nice yearlings, but even though they may not be the biggest yearlings, they could be the biggest two year old on the farm next year. Yeah. You've got some outstanding deer, say, on your low end. I'd like to know, and I'm sure viewers would like to know, entry level price. If somebody wanted to buy your lower end deer that are great pedigreed, but in your farm, they're your lower end deer, how much, say, would be a bred doe? How much would it cost? Uh, usually $2,000 is the, like the low, lowest end. And uh, it's bred? And, and it's bred, and it depends on, you know, hey, if. Uh, Multiple deer, how many deer, you know, we can cut you, cut you a deal, but uh, $2,000 is, is kind of the, the, the lowest. Folks, that is phenomenal. What you need to realize is that if you can produce a, a big, giant deer in the deer industry, 
they're worth, I mean, some guys are getting a million dollars for these big deer. They're worth a million dollars if you can produce a big giant. For $2,000, somebody buys a bread dough, okay, off your farm. Would it come with a DNA profile? Oh yeah, all our, gear, our DNA. So everyone is in the registry. And folks, if you're gonna buy a deer, I would recommend, if you're gonna get in the deer business, please do yourself a favor and deal with deer that are in the North American Deer Registry. It is the North American Deer Registry that keeps honest people honest, is what I say. Okay, you wanna know what you're buying, and every one of the deer on this deer farm and the deer farms that we go to that we feature on Deer and Wildlife Stories, every one of the deer are in the North American Deer Registry. And the reason why, because it assures you, the buyer, that you're getting what you're supposed to be getting. Now that Ivan and his family have been deer farming for seven years, I asked him what were some of the important things that he learned. I didn't realize that the industry uh, is so helpful to, uh, you know, to share their experiences. And there's always uh, something to, to tend to here. A, a week ago, we had a buck that uh, had pneumonia and uh, we knocked him down and treated him real well. Got him. After we medicate a buck like that, um, about five days afterwards, we like to give a, a booster shot, kind of a medication just to help get him completely over the uh, pneumonia or whatever it may be. So that's basically what we just did there. We have uh, a number of Dauphons on the bottle. Um, and the reason why we pull them, the bottle feed, the one is you can, the first couple months is the most important for, for, uh, for, for deer, any deer, is to keep them healthy because they're immune, they're building their immune system up. And so if you're bottle feeding and you can got hands on, if there's something wrong with them, you can pick it up right away. Growing big trophy deer whether it's on a deer farm like this or whether it's out in the pasture, requires three things in order for it to happen. Just like a stool would require three legs to stand up. Well, growing big trophy deer has three things in order to stand up, okay? And that is age, nutrition, and genetics. Well, age is something that is determined basically because, well, if you pull the trigger or not, you've got to let the animals get old. So the two things that we focus on are genetics and nutrition. So I asked Ivan, what are his thoughts as far as genetics and nutrition go? Nutrition is very important. It's uh, probably genetics is probably the most important to us. And then your nutrition is, is second. We mix our feed every day so they got fresh feed daily. Oh, and he's talking to a, a friend of mine and he said to try record rack. And so we did and we've been on it ever since and we're real happy with it. And uh, we don't take that, no shortcuts in our nutrition. We feed the best that we can get our hands on. The shock effect is an, it's an all natural nutritional supplement. The way we mix it in is a, a tumbler that we put our extra feed in and then we just take uh, two scoops per, uh, per buck or per head of deer. You know, it's, it's showing up in the pens. Uh, nice antlers. Uh, we have less broken tines. Uh, the, antler, the antlers are harder. Here's a question for you. What percentage do you think that the doe plays in making a great big trophy buck? I mean, in the grand scheme of things, what percentage? Well, I asked Ivan, and here's what he had to say. Really, the doe is in our uh, way of thinking is the dough is 70%, maybe higher. Uh, you know, the reason of raising nice deer. So you have to start with a good, solid dough in order to raise the, the kind of bucks that you want. Every week on the program, you hear us talking about how important pedigrees are to deer farmers. And that's the reason why we rely on the information that we get from the North American Deer Registry. Most deer farmers really rely on the North American Deer Registry as kind of the Bible, if you will, about how to base the value of animals. So I asked Ivan if he had an opportunity to buy the biggest deer on earth and it didn't have a pedigree, would he? All our deer are DNA registered uh, with North American uh, Deer Registry, and we don't buy a deer or even look at buying a deer that is not registered. When the show returns,
Today's a big day here at Double H Whitetail. It's our third annual open house. Yeah, this place is packed. Whitetail Deer Farmers of Ohio really appreciates Ivan Hostetler putting this event on for us. Now it's time for the Beam Fence Minute. I'm Mark Beam from Beam Fence Company. Today I'd like to talk to you about my roll master. This roll master is used to either pull up old wire that you want to get out of your field, or it's also used to, to roll up wire that you want to reuse. It works off pallet forks going on in front of your skidster or your tractor. The way it works is that when you want to stop and stretch your wire, you clamp the wire down, the weight of your unit then pulls ahead to stretch the wire. faster and safer way to put up wire. If you want more information about our product, you can contact us at beamfencecompany.com. Today's a big day here at Double H Whitetail. It's our third annual open house. We have people coming out from multiple states, North Dakota, Wisconsin, some people from Texas. The reason we do it is we like to give back to the industry. It's the day before the Ohio Trophy uh, and Breeders Auction. There's gonna be a lot of non-deer farmers here just to get them exposed to deer farming and what we do and uh, it's just going to be a lot of people. Last year we had approximately 400. Uh, this year we're, we're prepared for 700. So we're giving away some awesome door prizes and we tapped uh, a lot of our friends in the industry on the shoulder asking for donations just for door prizes. Market value on this stuff that has been donated by fellow deer farmers, it's north of 30 to $35,000 worth of door prizes we're giving away. Just an appreciation. Everybody uh, loves the industry and the most generous people uh, on the face of the earth. Some of the things that we're going to be doing here today uh, on our open house is, is farm tours. Then we, of course, we've got free food. We're going to have a hog roast. Some good old Johnny Cash music by John Schmidt. I'm Kurt Waldvogel. I've been deer farming nearly 30 years and I've been deer farming in Ohio since 2006. Today we're at Ivan Hostetler's open house. He puts this on annually. Whitetail Deer Farmers of Ohio is a compilation of deer farmers that raise whitetail deer in the state of Ohio. Our main focus is fair regulation. Uh, we're very active uh, legislatively and with the regulators in the state of Ohio and the USDA level. We just uh, try to make sure that uh, our rights are not infringed upon and we have fair regulation. Deer farming is very important to the rural agriculture here in Ohio as it creates lots of jobs, you know, in the local feed mills, veterinary clinics, uh, supports your local supermarkets. I'm Dr. Shane Donnelly. I'm one of the owners of the Sugar Creek Veterinary Clinic in Sugar Creek, Ohio. Deer farming is big business in Ohio. Uh, it's vital to the local economy, brings tons of jobs here. It's vitally important to our clinic as a small business. The deer on deer farms are very healthy animals. Uh, we make sure of that. All right, we're all huddled up underneath this tent like a bunch of wet rats. I mean, it is flat pouring down rain. And all those, this is a private event at Double H Whitetails. Tomorrow and the next day, uh, the Whitetail Deer Farmers of Ohio are going to have their annual sale. And so this precedes annual sale, kind of gets everybody excited. And Ivan has a chance to show off the deer on his place and everybody right now is trying to keep them getting too wet. All right, so what did y'all go do? You came here a little while ago and introduced me to your wife and, and y'all took off. Tell me what you did. Uh -huh. Then we jumped in the cart. I'm, I'm in the market. I'm looking for a breeder buck. And uh, he rolled up the Rockstar treatment and gave me the Rockstar tour. And I uh, went and saw two or three pins of some of the biggest bucks I've ever seen today. They're unbelievable. Unbelievable. And you wound up buying one? Yeah, bought a nice, real nice yearling. So. But you got a good nice one. Yearling. If it came from here, you got a good the, one. It's the biggest one in the pen. So. Good deal. <laughs> yeah, I'm really excited. 
All right, Jerry from Iowa sends actually a snail mail. Says, uh, Keith, your deer and wildlife story show is my favorite on the network. I'm an avid deer hunter, and I can't get enough information about what's going on in the deer farming world. Tell me if you would, how do I sign up for the Winter Deer Farm Sweepstakes? I would love to become a deer farmer someday. Jerry, it's easy to do. Go to winadeerfarm.com. And folks, if you're not aware of what's going on, thanks to Record Rack Deer Feeds, we're setting somebody up as a deer farmer. Go to winadeerfarm.com and register today. If you have any questions or comments about today's program, shoot me an email and I promise you, I'll get right back with you. You can also follow me on Facebook and Instagram. My name is Keith Warren and thanks for watching Deer and Wildlife Stories. Closed captioning is brought to you by Seven Seas Whitetails.